The film opens with a series of animated flashbacks of Kayla's childhood as she embarks on all sorts of adventures with her parents, Jay and Rebecca. However, their happy family life does not last forever. Jumping on 15-year-old Kayla. Here we see that Rebecca and Jay have since divorced, and the reason for the divorce has not been disclosed. On this day, her mother Rebecca drove her boyfriend to the airport, who was traveling to another city for work reasons. Kayla, sitting in her back seat, seems frustrated about going to her school's ballet, which she calls her silly retreat. Her mother then sends Kayla to Jay's house, where she is greeted by Jay and his new girlfriend Trini. Today Kayla takes Jay's car because she's going to ballet camp in Jay's car. On the way, her daughter meets Kayla's best friend Brittany sitting alone at the bus stop. In fact, Brittany is waiting for a bus to the same retreat, so Kayla invites her to travel with her. They continue their course and Kayla points out that Brittany has a birthmark on her face, but Brittany insists it is nothing serious. After a few minutes, Britt said she wanted to go to the bathroom and ask Jay to stop. Since there is no resting place in sight, the two go into the forest on the side of the road. Her father waits in front of the car, but they are gone for quite some time before her father decides to go into the woods himself. While searching for the girls, they hear screams and run towards the sound. Jay then finds Kayla sitting alone on a bridge with a scared look on her face. Apparently Brittany has fallen. She claims that Brittany's accidental fall was a joke. Jay rushes into the river looking for Brittany, but she is nowhere to be found. His cell phone was destroyed during this search, and no trace of Brittany was found other than the wallet containing the cell phone. Jay panics. He returned to his car, used Kayla's phone to call 911, and waited for Kayla to stop. Here, Kayla finally admits to lying earlier. Brittany didn't fall, instead Kayla intentionally poked her when she was acting like a slut. Jay shuddered at this somber confession and dragged her to the ground as the truck passed by. Even though Jay has done nothing wrong, he is as desperate as any normal man to save his daughter. He thought a little and managed to start his plan. Instead of driving to ballet camp, they drive back into town and head to Rebecca's office. Jay is reluctant to tell his ex-wife Rebecca right away. When Rebecca sees Jay, she comes to terms with what happened and thinks that Jay was an irresponsible father for not sending Kayla to ballet. Jay took Kayla to her daughter and she watched Kayla throw up and ask for her inhaler. Kayla has asthma and can't remember where she last saw her inhaler. So they gave her her new inhaler and took her Kayla home. While Kayla is taking a bath, Rebecca notices a tear in her shirt and asks how it happened, prompting Kayla to confess what she has done. As soon as Rebecca comes out of the bathroom, she quarrels with Jay because she wants to go to the river to find Brittany, but Jay stops her. He said that Brittany would have broken her neck in her fall, and if she hadn't died in the fall she would have drowned or died of hypothermia, so Brittany would have broken her neck. Convinces her that he must be dead. Now that Kayla is the only daughter, all she has to do is protect her. Realizing that Jay is right, Rebecca agrees to help her. Afterwards, she set her torn shirt on fire in the fireplace in an attempt to extinguish all evidence against her daughter. That night, she dreams of Brittany's dead body, so it's clear that this whole situation still haunts her. The next day, Jay stops by again when Rebecca is acting strangely after last night's nightmare. These divorced parents are debating how they could do something so heinous to their daughter and whether it was an accident. Kayla, who was listening to their conversation, goes berserk and tries to break her glass and escape. Her parents soon followed her and brought her home, but she was flopping around. This kind of spoiled brat yelled at Jay and she said she pushed Brittany on purpose, whatever that meant. Due to family tensions, Jay decides to leave home for a while. Later that day, Brittany's father Sam shows up and hears that Kayla didn't come to the dance camp, so she assumes Kayla is staying there. He believes Kayla and Brittany are skipping camp because they are best friends. Apparently Rebecca lied that Kayla was sick and didn't go to dance camp so Brittany didn't know her whereabouts. Sam then admitted that he had an argument with Brittany yesterday and then took her to dance camp on the bus, which he now regrets. When he asks to speak to Kayla, Rebecca lies that she is at the doctor's. 
the man leaves and asks Rebecca to call Kayla when she gets back. Later that day, Sam calls Rebecca repeatedly, and Rebecca becomes unbearable and goes downstairs. Rebecca asks Kayla to lie to Sam that she doesn't know where Brittany is, but a frightened Kayla refuses to tell her. Jay revisits the house before an argument erupts. Rebecca tells Kayla what happened, so her parents pack up and stay in a hotel for a few days, intending to teach Kayla what to say and do over the next few days. As Rebecca dumps her things in the trunk of her car, Brittany's father Sam reappears and asks her why she hasn't answered the phone all morning. He also wants to see Kayla because he is worried about her missing daughter, but Rebecca lies again, claiming that Kayla is still in the hospital for tests. While they chat, a curious Jay goes to the driveway to check on the situation, and soon Kayla leaves the house to expose her lie. Upon seeing this scene, Sam's suspicion grows and he approaches Kayla to directly ask her where Brittany is, but when Jay intervenes, Sam pushes Sam away and Jay begins to have a nosebleed. Before things got any worse, Sam took a step back and walked away saying he would call the police. The two share a sweet moment as Rebecca cleans Jay's bloody nose, giving Kayla a smile as she watches from afar. Later, Jay talks about the birthmark he saw on Brittany's face yesterday and how he used it to blame Sam for Brittany's disappearance. Rebecca used to work as a murderer, so Jay hatches a plan. Rebecca visits Kenji, a former colleague at the scene of the murder, and offers a false story. She claims her daughter's best friend, Brittany, hasn't been seen for the last 24 hours, and that her father just showed up at the house and looked mad. Additionally, she suspects Brittany was being abused. Jay finds Kayla at her house and realizes she cut herself. He preaches to her that this mistake is not just a mistake and that a bright future awaits. Jay calms her down and tells her she's beautiful, but she replies that Kayla is different from Brittany. Here we see Kayla jealous of her friends. Later that day, Rebecca takes detectives home to question Kayla about Brittany. Kayla plays with her parents' lie that she saw Brittany with a bruise a few days ago, but she says she hasn't seen her since. It also added that over the course of her and Brittany's friendship, Brittany often clashed with her father and claimed several times that her father had beaten her. Jay was listening upstairs while all this was happening. When the detective got up to leave, she said the next thing was to interrogate Brittany's father. It's clear from her tone that she believes Brittany's father, Sam, was behind this incident. Later, two detectives show up and question Sam. The man tried to file a missing persons report, claiming he was looking for Brittany, but the police didn't take it seriously because Britt had fled earlier. This only arouses suspicion of investigators. The detective accuses Sam of abusing his daughter, to Sam's surprise, but he denies ever touching Brittany. The next day, Jay takes Kayla to her house but runs into his girlfriend Trini instead of her. Trini found a woman's purse in Jay's car the other day, which upsets him as he wants to know who owns it. It's clear that it's Brittany's purse, but Jay lies and says it's Kayla's. As the two argue, Kayla, still bitter about her father dating someone else, walks out. Meanwhile, while Rebecca is at work, an investigator arrives and tells her that Sam's neighbors have a different opinion of Sam than Kayla. They ask Rebecca if Kayla ever told her about Brittany losing her cell phone, but Rebecca denies. However, she is shocked when the police track down Brittany's cell phone and reveal that the cell phone was last used downtown, where Jay lives. In the next scene, Kayla comes home from Jay's apartment. Suddenly she heard tires screeching on the road when she saw Sam approaching. Sam again wants to know where Brittany is. This time, Kayla broke it off and started saying she didn't want to hurt anyone. Hearing this, the man was frightened, and she ran into her house screaming while the man chased her. After returning home, Sam continues to bang on the wall, and Kayla uses an inhaler out of fear. Rebecca then follows Jay back home. She gets angry and yells at Jay for being stupid enough to let the police track Brittany's phone downtown. But Jay tells her to relax because she's not just herself, there's a lot of people living downtown. Kayla cried with frustration when she saw her parents fighting, and she stopped her fighting to calm it down. On the other side of the story, investigators are chasing them. 
They go to the bus station where Brittany's father sent her and look around her. Detective Kenji stares at the nearby river curiously. The next day, an investigator stops by again, this time claiming to have read the text between Kayla and Brittany. Apparently, the two recently got into a fight over a boy at school. In one of the texts Kayla even says she wants to kill Brittany. This raises suspicion of the police, who decide to ask if Kayla was near the bridge with Brittany that day. When asked about the bridge, the parents were nervous and said no, but police searched along the river with their dogs and found Kayla's inhaler near the bridge, prompting investigators to confirm that her parents had died. He made it clear that he knew he was lying. Her parents pretend to be surprised, and Rebecca is confused to learn that Kayla will be taken to the police, so she tells her detective friend to leave the house. Jay and Rebecca watch everything fall apart and make a last-ditch effort to save her daughter. The next scene shows a night scene where Jay and Rebecca are seen in the car in front of Sam's house. They sneak into Sam's backyard and turn on Brittany's phone so the police can track the signal and give the impression that Sam is hiding Brittany somewhere in the house. Jay plans to bury it in the backyard while Rebecca waits nearby. Suddenly, Sam appears out of nowhere and confronts Rebecca. She was taken aback, so Jay rushed to attack Sam and helped her by dipping her head into her frozen ditch. However, Rebecca stops him before he can kill Sam. Before they leave, he tells them that Sam knows what Kayla did. Jay and Rebecca drive away from the scene, but as they are about to leave, Sam jumps out into the middle of the road and tries to stop them, but they are unable to do so. Instead, they run him over. Sam is covered in blood and begs for his life as they stop and watch. Rebecca almost calls 911, but Jay stops her when he realizes Sam's survival will only cause more trouble. And they waited until he bled to death. What they did to the bodies is never explained, but the next morning, a devastated Rebecca begs Jay not to go home, and Jay does as he is told. They take a sweet nap and then have breakfast with an energetic Kayla, who apparently doesn't know what happened to Brittany's father last night. They try to scrape Sam's blood off Rebecca's car, but suddenly they hear the door creak. And of all the people, Brittany suddenly seems alive. Jay and Rebecca's faces turn pale as if they saw a ghost or something. Brittany looks at their faces and reveals that their disappearance was just a facade she and Kayla made up so Brittany could visit her boyfriend. Kayla's parents are speechless when they hear this. Trying to contain her anger, Rebecca approaches the girl and tells her to go home. Jay and Rebecca are shocked by the murder of an innocent man and disappointed in her daughter. They confront Kayla, who only now admits that Brittany wasn't dead and that it was all a prank. She wanted to reveal her truth sooner, but missed seeing her parents reconcile by covering up her murder, so she continued to lie. She knows it's wrong and begs her parents to forgive her and not leave her. The film ends on a sentimental note, with the three hugging each other as if it were the last. The doorbell then rings repeatedly, followed by approaching police sirens from a distance. In a shocking twist, the film concludes with a mix of relief and remorse as Brittany reveals that her disappearance was a prank, leaving Kayla's parents stunned by the consequences of their actions. Amid the chaos, the family comes together, embracing each other tightly, seeking forgiveness and reconciliation before facing the impending consequences of their elaborate deception and the tragic events that unfolded. As the doorbell rings persistently, and the distant police sirens grow louder, the film leaves the audience pondering the aftermath of their actions and the uncertain future that lies ahead for Kayla and her fractured family.